Welcome everyone who is joining us today on live session for a webinar from Penny Automation and those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Today we talk about update on our Kenopen and Kenopen FT IO device profile. What is new? what is remaining and what can automation can offer you in regard of it if you design uh, IO modules or devices. So briefly, uh, for those of you who don't know who am I and what I'm doing at can automation, um, my name is Oscar Kaplun, and I will lead you through the, today's webinar. I'm an electrical engineer and working as technical secretary at Can Automation, supervising multiple um, special interest groups, uh, designing specifications such as IU modules and application like Can Open Lift, Drive Control, Encoder, and furthermore. Beside that, I also doing testing, uh, conformity testing at CAN Automation for CAN Open devices that are designed. And also now it is available to test CAN Open FD devices. In this webinar, I would briefly introduce what CAN Automation does and what it can offer you as if you become a member. Then we go in details, what is actually IO device profile we have designed, we have uh, maintained and maintained now. And it's new part can open FT. And finally, we talk about what can you do with this if you're designing GAN-based applications. So briefly introduction of scan automation. It is, it was organized at the times when CAN emerged uh, as a technology in general, was used extensive, intensively in automation, but then other industrial area applications found out that it could be very useful also in their uh, um, area. So, can automation was organized to provide all the information, product related, marketing related, um, regarding of uh, and technical uh, content. What is it actually? How you handle um, can based uh, protocols? Since then, we have experience for over twenty five years. Um, providing these services and doing organizing by such a means, a kind of social network among our members. So we can answer practically every your questions. If we cannot ourselves, we ask our members to do so. Can Automation located, is located in Nuremberg in Germany. Um, contact data is available on our website. More to this in at the end of the webinar. Can Automation is a membership-based organization and ever since organizing the number of members grown, now it's reached 703 members. And this in generally shows over the years that the interest to the CAN-based technology is still uh, existing. However, it is difficult from this diagram to um, tell us exactly which one is actually uh, more uh, related and what are the members, what technology, exact technology they use. But it's in general to say that the CAN-based technologies are still interesting. Can Automation was founded in 1992 uh, by um, individual, Mr. Selvanger, which was uh, 
Stewart Canal Automation and some other companies, founding members of Canal Automation that are still our members. In the first steps, there were uh, some uh, marketing activities to promote the um, organization, what it can offer to you, uh, to, to everybody who is joining, who is organizing and uh, designing um, can-based uh, devices. Or it was organized some um, exhibitions to provide first products to show what is going on, what is can, um, how to handle it, and where can you get the information. Of course, at this time, it was necessary to make um, devices which will be developed more or less interoperable. There was a reason to design the specification for that. So some specification like um, physical layer and data link layer were um, already there. Um, it is all based, actually can based on uh, Robert Bosch um, development of CAN bus and uh, some scientific projects uh, were asked, were grown up and um, emerged in there. And this, in um, according to the scientific project, they have designed can first can application layer containing most of the necessary information that will require you to use to implement uh, in your device. However, the profile, the specification, let's say, for this can application layer covers um, various aspects of um, communication systems. Wasn't really that useful for simple devices. So they come up with some um, reduced, short, a very mostly effective version of it. It is called and can open ever since. Since there are many technologies emerged, can base such as CanFD, and now also can excel. So we had to handle them all, design specifications, provide application notes, recommendation guidelines, how to develop devices, how to uh, design networks, what you need to know to, to start developing device and so on. So I have uh, slightly um, changed a modified our uh, sorry, our slide uh, for the technical groups. So to know can automation has its technical arm providing technical information and has its business arm providing marketing information, opening a mark for our members and so on, such things um, that are necessary. So we start with the technical um, arm of can automation. So this is um, oversee committee for technical groups, which say which technical directions we go. This is actually technical committee, which decides in there. So which uh, technologies are we, can based technologies are we developing now and how are we developing now? And the structure of the slide, as you can see, the structure of these groups uh, is hierarchical, technical committee oversees all uh, groups. And within the group, uh, we develop specification for very certain uh, profile, very certain direction. We're starting, of course, with um, communication layers. There are differences uh, between uh, new emerging technologies. So it was necessary to um, uh, organize uh, lower layers group which oversee the development of data link layer and physical layer for all three emerging technologies can can fd and can excel beside that uh, we have also can based technology standardized one in within a can automation um, it is can open, which exists already 20 years. There are plenty of devices available on the market and the technology is very stable and very effective, very flexible, it's used uh, for so many years. And now based on new data link layer, can FD uh, and can Excel, um, mostly uh, first can FD, 
uh, further version of can open is developed called can open FT. Um, it has also FURVA various protocol services, which are required to be developed as specifications to understand how to implement those kind of devices. Since there is no possible to, or it's difficult to put this in one specification, it will be a normal uh, a number of pages in there. We have split this in a basic information, basic protocols and advanced protocols. There are certain things that also need to be designed, such as how do I divide, um, describe my device in electronic form? How do I um, configure my device? If I have it, what are the services, um, software-based, hardware-based functionality? This is going to the separate groups in there. There is also J9039, which we are actually effectively handling. However, um, for the specification, we do not maintain uh, J1939 specification. Mostly it is done by SIA organization in the USA. What we do, uh, the emerging can FT data link layer is not yet fully uh, integrated in J1939 by SIA. So we proposed our way to do things using the um, actually not uh, assigned CAN ID for this reason. So on behalf of our members, they now can design J1939 um, CAN FT based. Um, devices. Beside that, we offer our assistance to the SA organization to improve J1939 and also assistance in new emerging data link layers, which will be designed in there. Beside that, this is profiles, the lower layers, um, the CAN-based, CAN-open technologies, and there is was necess necessity since we have then um, profiles for the very certain device kinds. They are technology independent in their description since they are parameter description. Uh, only communication services will be different. So we have uh, slightly distinguished between themselves, such as can open, can open FD. Uh, so we set uh, the profiles will incorporate all the device kinds we have and they are technology independent. We have to describe technology depending part in corresponding part of the document, such as can open, can open FD and whatever comes next. So today we talk about IO modules. There is only one group of many groups in profiles. They design this very kind of <coughs> specifications for the data interface for these specific devices to, to provide um, the possibility to implement the device in very interoperability uh, related way. So we have the data, which is uh, same across various IO modules, across various drive controls. This is the reason of being specifying this in the, within. Besides that, uh, safety and security uh, is grown uh, on interest in various application fields. So we asked uh, by our members to design a corresponding specification for data link layer security and higher link layer, uh, higher layer um, protocol security and so on. Additionally, the new group is higher availability, providing for the first uh, redundancy group, which this group um, works on specification to cover redundancy in various uh, CAN-based can networks. So there was a technical groups and uh, marketing groups, which we have actually uh, called up uh, to serve our members uh, to open new markets, provide demonstrations search for exhibitions, go to exhibitions, demonstrate the devices, uh, present our members' products and so on, organize events, conferences for our members to bring people together to exchange 
information and they on new emerging gain technology and so proposing uh, pro, um, pro, uh, providing this um, progress to uh, cross uh, through various markets. We have some publications related to the marketing activities describing what is the product, how you handle this uh, in various languages. And finally, the slide with our services, what we actually offer to every interested parties, others, uh, device designer or system designer, marketing activities or technical. So in the main, we do design specification. This information is not only available for our members, but should be available for all interested parties who would like to go into GAN development. For this reason, we organize conferences, industrial conference, our international conferences, and we provide some new recent activities and presentations on new technologies available at GAN automation, GAN-based technologies, and promote also our specifications and design specifications so that people know where to uh, come and how to get these uh, things for the design. We're also offering some consulting services if you uh, need to know how to design a system, how to design, uh, design a device, and what, where should you start um, when you want to, devise, to design a device or system. Um, there are services available for members uh, of ours, either your device design or system design. We're offering also technical services such as uh, uh, seminars, the, uh, trainings, in CAN-based technologies, so you know how to do this. And finally, for device designers, this is also possible, and it's not only possible, but it is uh, very reliable to design, to test their device for conformance to the open These services are offered also from us. Um, and for marketing activities, as I said, we have various marketing publications, various activities, opening new markets, designing brochures for the specific markets and exhibitions to promote the technology across various um, markets. We offer also technical um, email service, providing marketing activities, information about can automation, what is going on in there for our members, what is going on say can automation and in general, what is going in the world of CAN-based technologies. We have also a website where you could find the useful information for you, either you do test your device, or would like to have a post an advertisement to promote your product, or you just seek for technical information, either specification, or maybe you want to join some kind of training or the webinar like uh, this today. Finally, in this uh, introduction, there are certain uh, um, benefits, advantages. If you become a member of our organization, you could also uh, just stay away. Um, there is uh, little needed to de design a uh, can open device, but having been a member uh, offers certain uh, advantages. Um, against being non-member, such as you getting all specifications available, whenever, whatever you design, you need probably some additional uh, specification for advanced protocol, some specific device kinds you need, maybe you design application and you need to compile this uh, yourself also, it is possible um, across multiple specifications with multiple specification, this is available and for members in a way that you have access to all specifications. You get the testing certification, what is called conformance testing uh, to reduce price. Um, and you have a, a possibility to 
uh, not a possibility you have uh, access to the test tool which you could protest your devices uh, before sending to us for conformance testing or whatever or you test it uh, in the earlier stage of implementation at your company as well there is also free um, of charge vendor id unique identificator identificator of your company which is required for every can open um, devices and also you have a participation in an interoperability test um, for free in this case it's only available for members and of course an interesting and important part that you could participate in activities of the group and participate in development of the specifications effectively bringing your requirements into the specification this is available for members so far about this introduction a couple minutes already gone so we have to uh, go through the technical details we talk about uh, io modules today is the actually webinar is an update to the existing webinar i held a um, couple of weeks uh, earlier a uh, couple months earlier sorry but in chinese language however um, this is um, not only update but also um, backwards uh, backwards looking for uh, what is uh, done what is done and now what is also to do and what is the current state of this development so can open profile for IO modules uh, is developed within the special interest group IO modules in a uh, um, interest group uh, which supervises uh, profiles, as I mentioned, in a technical arm of Kenyan automation. There are multiple companies um, developing it actively with us. Uh, contact us uh, contacting us we join um, organizing uh, joint meetings where we see what we can do further for this profile how we maintain it add new functions and so on. so they can open based version of specification is contains two parts describing generic uh, data interface for io modules and part two specific for the joysticks so if you design those uh, devices, generic IO device could be gateways, could be buttons, could be displays, HMI, whatever you have IO uh, input, um, IOs in there, then could be used uh, to design. There is also application uh, recommended practice, but rather as an application, um, for the specification 401 device profile um, called operator in environment. So you have actually an operator who operates the mobile platform for a kind of crane or so on, have multiple joysticks, multiple controls, buttons, um, LEDs, maybe even HMIs and so on. And this is the recommended practice how to do so. So please remember, specification is designed within the group IO modules. If you would like to participate or just to learn a bit more about this, just contact us and visit a technical meeting of this group if you are a member. If you're not member, you could just provide your comments. We will discuss them in the group in the group itself. So this specification will no longer exist as it is. It will be a part of another specification since we have emerging new technologies, can open FT. We're talking in the next slides about this, but just to know that this one can open specification is no longer gone. It's currently state is active, but very soon will be replaced with one containing this can open inside. Uh, for the information as device profiles, um, uh, to know uh, if you are first time with this um, hearing um, 
this webinar um, starting with can open technology I have never done this before and I have to a little bit learn about this so we're offering um, for IO modules they are belonging to the profiles they are currently then um, can technology independent uh, content data interface and this specification contains technology related parts where you define where we define um, process data mapping and communication parameters needed for IO modules. So to know, to understand this all, um, the reason uh, for existing Afghan automation is to provide not only specification as it is, but increase the level of interoperability of developed devices. By this means we introduce device profiles, which says standardized device um, kind uh, data interface across, uh, in this case, of IO modules. So IO modules are various manufacturers, as you can see from this slide, device A to D. They are provided from various manufacturers, for example. And despite this different case, they could contain uh, IO modules, especially as device C and even device A. Um, for device B, which is drive control, and device D, there is separate specification. But device profiles means that they have even similar devices, such as A and C, from the different manufacturers that still operate in the network. And with easy, with simple uh, integration, or completely fully integrated in the network and operate at a full extent. So this is the reason for that. And they exchange the data in the same manner, simplifying this collecting of the data and processing them in the application. That's the reason uh, for doing these device profiles separately design device profile specifications to increase the level of interoperability. This slide should just demonstrate uh, how it is possible, how the simple network with IO modules such as device A and C could look like and what can be uh, done in there, what are the advantages. So the device profile includes the following um, standardized definitions, which are the same um, structured, um, have the same data content, uh, but they're not the same, the similar data content um, across all IO modules such as device 1000, um, device type, um, such as error behavior is the same across device, but this is communication one. PDO communication um, and mapping parameters also allowing you effectively exchange the data, the very same data across various devices. So you could connect this device and should be uh, immediately operating in the network. The device specific means in this case, um, IO module specific data types and application optic that apply only for IO modules of various kinds. Within the various kinds we described in there, there are certain parameters which could be reused in various devices. So application state machine is also possible, but for the moment to so simplicity, it is not defined. So it is left manufacturer specific. So let's just take a look uh, in what is similar across even various new technologies can open and can open FD is also similar like this. The device 1000, um, says what kind of um, IO module uh, you're actually purchasing as the system manufacturer, system de designer, or you'd have to do a design as a device manufacturer to know, to, to let the system designer know what is device uh, about. Uh, can the system designer integrate this one? 
So this structure of this parameter, this can open index, just to remember, um, can open has an indexing system called object dictionary. You have all the parameters inside um, the data is separated from the uh, protocol interface. Protocol configuration is also located in object dictionary. So this object 1000 belongs to the communication parameters. And you actually see um, this one uh, working in there. So the object 1000 is index 1000. It has uh, 250, uh, typically every index contains, has uh, 255 uh, index, uh, sub indexes and total number of indexes is 16 bit number. So it has 65,353 indexes effectively uh, allowing you to design multiple parameters. So we separate this structure, but for that reason, I would point you to our can open based uh, seminar or ask um, read the can open specification itself, how these whole things, how the indexes are structured within the object dictionary. For this one, this is very specific. It tells me device profile in this case is uh, a U device profile and the structure of 32 bit of this uh, parameter indicates which kind of uh, input functionality is in there. Is this input, output, is this digital or analog one? There is also a bit M indicating if the uh, process data I exchange um, provide generate by this device or received by this device is standardized, uh, predefined used, or is completely manufacturer specific. Predefined one allows you to provide interoperable, extremely interoperable devices. Device specific mapping provides, uh, of course, uh, very specific ones, but you have to check exactly if the devices you purchase as a system designer, for example, are compatible with each other based on their device specific video mapping. So, and finally, um, there is necessity in this parameter to indicate Others, if this is a specific kind of um, IO module, as we know it, as you call it, uh, like a joysticks or HMI or whatever. For a moment, uh, only joysticks are provided in a specific functionality. While we um, thinking about to um, integrate some uh, other um, applications in the uh, other specific further functionality which is available. So by using this parameter, by just reading of this parameter, system designer knows exactly what is this device, what is this functionality and how to handle it. For having this parameter, knowing this uh, about can open, uh, you can read um, from these parameters is mandatory for, for all devices. If you read object thousand, you know exactly what the device actually contains, especially in this relation. In this slide, you see an example of a U module network, which indicates how this operates in general, how the communication works. We have various devices, there's more advanced example, we have various devices. Some of those are just digital inputs, some are digital outputs. Maybe there could be also some analog inputs in there, but they have to brought to that together. The <coughs> process data is configured in the device as transmit, as a one that is transmitted, shall be transmitted, or received, transmitted called transmit PDO, and received is called received PDO. Just for information, there is no PD, 
cheap PDO, transmit PDO, or receive PDO on the bus. This is just PDO. This TPDO and RPDO is purely configuration in the device for either direction. Transmission is a TPDO, so it is goes uh, to the bus, and RPDO is what is received by the device. You can configure various, uh, depending on a functionality, various um, PDOs. There are certain fixed things in there, as you can see. For example, digital input is mostly contain transmit PDO because you can see in the next slides how it is done, why it is that so. And uh, digital outputs or outputs in general, they have received PDO, they receive data. So you need to design a network uh, also to get receive this all transmitted data, collect them and process them further. There will be a kind of device age. However, there will be a difficulty, as you can see, RPDO5 in this device receives transmit PDO1 from possibly all those six devices, but that is not true because only a single um, device age on a single PDO, RPDO configured will be transmitted, uh, received the data from only one device. This is only possible from one device. It's from multiple. The uh, data, which is constantly submitted uh, at different time intervals, even very close to each other, from all those six devices, RC, R2C, and E2G, will not reach uh, actually device H, only one of those, Um, if it is configured the very same one, this is called the um, PDO linking. You can learn this uh, principle from our seminar, how to do so, what is the reason for that? And this PDO linking allows you to um, connect both PDOs, which one should be transmitted, and the same can ID is con shall be configured in the device receiving this PDO. This is the only way those uh, this PDO will be received. So it is designed the same uh, special way so that device H receives TPDO one from only one specific device. So uh, if there are the same can ID. For TPDO1 in all six devices you see there, that will be a trouble, a problem. Device H wouldn't constantly override this data inside. So it shall be cautious to do so, to check exactly from which device should it receive the data, or otherwise, if the data shall be received through for more six devices transmitting TPDO1, then there shall be designed six RPDOs to receive exactly this data in a very specific manner and distinguished only by their CAN IDs, containing also node ID of each device, you know exactly from which device the data come up. Just such an information for you to learn. So then we have uh, a nice couple of examples. They are same um, in classical can open as we call it now as in can open FT. For the moment, this is just a block diagram, a simplified block diagram. For the um, very recent one, please check out the specification for 01. Digital input example. So on the left side, see transmission media this is actually a CAN bus. With the communication on the bus, the principle of working of the device, such as digital input or output, is then slightly different from the concept. It is not seen from the point of view of the device. The device sends something somewhere, but it is the bus which receives from the device the things. That is why. 
the, from the point of view of the device, it has transmit video. But this means this data is transmitted across the network from the digital input. This means digital input. So we have somewhere in the application, we have a hardware, we have several inputs, the data come inside, goes through the optional filter. The polarity is um, checked if it sh shall be changed, then it will be triggered, switch on all any edges, triggered which condition uh, shall um, be triggered to um, say, allow the data to go across the network received data, which single uh, digital input is active. Um, the data goes into process value as you see in object dictionary is this corresponding index specified. It is not uh, shown here for the moment, but it is. Uh, mapping into communication service. Uh, now due to various new technologies, uh, it is not known which communication service will be used. Mostly this video for Kenopen and Kenopen FD. And the data transmission uh, causes then this process value to be transmitted across the network to the PLC or whatever needs to know which single dig digital input is currently active. The trigger condition additionally, um, not only with the process value, but trigger condition uh, with the comparator and latch is used to trigger the data on this falling um, edge or rising edge on both detected so it can cause the data to transmit over the CAN bus. The similar way is done actually for analog input example. Uh, output is not provided but it was also interesting that is working actually in reverse effect. But uh, for the analog input, this is more interesting because uh, you have beside the input itself and signal conditioning, they have more trigger conditions in there, triggering very specific uh, possibilities. Actually, if the value is larger than, smaller than, then the, if the delta um, uh, deviation is bigger than, smaller than, is deviation, um, less smaller deviation of, the, of two deviations, such kind of trigger condition are possible, are going into tr logic. And based on that, it trigger, uh, triggers the transmission over CAN bus. So you transmit actually process value indicating single analog input value. 16 bit, 32 bit, 8 bit, whatever is specified in there. So this just principle of operating of the bus. Now we can look into interoperability data, which every device transmits. The profile has default mapping, which means the default standardized um, interface. You connect your devices and immediately this data is available. So you may configure your device further, but um, if the device designer actually allows that, but basically could be also used like that. So actually all devices like that purchased from the, uh, on the market or from the shelf um, could be integrated in the network and start immediately transmitting the data exactly with this uh, configuration. So it uh, reduces efforts of configuring the network itself. So in a classic um, IO modules, classic in open IO modules, there was the idea to design uh, four default TPDOs, transmit PDOs and uh, receive PDOs in each single device, depending on its functionality, whether it has analog or digital input and output or all together. So the very simple extent you can see here 
practically the default mapping for this case. In the first PDO, TPDO, is actually transmit PDO corresponds to the data provided by digital input. And there was only place or is only place for 64 digital inputs. So each value here, index 6000 subindex 1 to 8, contains only 8 uh, bit. So totally, the full PDO contains 64 bit. So this will be 64 inputs uh, possible, the data on these inputs uh, to transmit at all. If you have digital output, then you receive, of course, the same values, but there will be kind of LEDs information you will uh, in shown and you receive from the control device this data and the same number of outputs is possible. 64 bit, uh, 64 outputs are possible to uh, control, uh, to monitor by within one uh, receive video, with the first receive video actually in every single device. Well, since the analog values are a little bit uh, larger, like uh, 16 or 32 bit, um, the number of the values is dramatically reduced, but still there are four 16 bit values for output and inputs possible. Throughout several TPDOs, actually covering this uh, situation with the first and second uh, PDO. Uh, with a TP, first TPDO and first RPDO indicating inputs and outputs. And if I have a choice because some kind of uh, needing also values to each input, then we could cover uh, barely uh, half of this uh, using analog values. The other half we need is then manufacturer specific. But this is already a standardized way to do so. If you have a smaller system, then you could, of course, use it. And uh, the interoperability of this one is uh, very high. Well, um, that is about the data interface, how you process data, have a process data in your IO module, whatever it might be. And then, of course, if you have designed a device, you would like to test it. And if your system designer would like to check your devices, if they are actually interoperable that you've purchased from the various manufacturers. Designing this conformance, making conformance testing is already a first stage of this. And we do this. You can pre-test your device and check this just for implementation if nothing uh, is wrong. But conformance testing is only not only a first step. This is only a static testing it allows you to know that can open is actually can open is actually integrated in there. But the device profile as itself we do not test. However, we offer a in small scale interoperability testing also for IO modules and so on. Then you know on a very simple network how these devices from various manufacturers working with a already pre-configured network as a test device, if I integrate this, if it is working in this network and provide its process data, let itself, itself can be configured to the specific uh, process data and so on. However, in your specific system, um, you will have completely different network probably. So but just to, to know, the interoperability of those devices is slightly increased, but conformance testing just gives you a short uh, glimpse into the content of the device. It does not increase um, uh, immediately the interoperability of the device. Interoperability has to be checked to achieve it. 
So if you design a device, an application profile from 401 uh, modules by yourself, then you have to do this interoperability on yourself, have to check out if the device are configurable, if they can um, be configured to the values you wanted them to, if they are also integrated in your um, PLC um, and so on. These are questions you have to be uh, have to be answered in this case. So then we go to the KnopenFT part. Uh, before that, I will go through the technology uh, just to explain it uh, why we do this and uh, what is the new technology and how does it. Um, work together. Robert Bosch developed um, CAN and a couple of years back, uh, 2013 started with CANFT, new technology for automotive, automotive, and now it is available for industrial um, automation and various other application fields beside automotive. There are controllers available, CANFT controllers and KNFT transceivers, so it can design uh, practically the communication itself. KNFT was meant to overcome the limitations of um, CAN bus, providing much more bigger payload, more data, up to eight times bigger data, um, at 64 bytes, and allowing uh, higher speed than transmission speeds that can provided. So beside it is not higher transmission, but the possibility to switch between the speeds, you can leave all the compatible to CAN based, or you can switch to the CANFT one. So there's opportunities available. Based on these things, um, mostly um, on the payload itself, the high speed uh, allows actually transmission itself, but more interesting is the higher payload. And this, where the new protocol universal STO is integrated, is only available in KNOPNFT and offers certain key components, key features, which are not available in service data object is used in classic STO for point-to-point -point communication for diagnostics, configuration of the devices, whatever. So there, briefly over the functionality in there, there is a node ID used to identify every can open or can open FD device. And a classic STO used this to address accordingly the device where the data is located. It's called server. It is called uh, server. And the client is the one which access it. So they had, the client has to reconfigure, be reconfigured to the node ID after a sender device. And the, uh, the server has to be reconfigured to send the, device, the data back, has to be reconfigured to the client node ID. It is effectively eliminated in the universal still. It is only one node ID is necessary. And this is one of the client itself. So the sender node ID. It's effectively reduced the configuration efforts for such kind of communication service. Beside that, there is three uh, possibility available. Uh, transmit the data in unicast, same as was possible with classical, PD, uh, classical STO, point to point communication. But beyond that, it's available now. Uh, can related functionality, can related communication, broadcast of data, and multicast. This is not available in classic in open. So, beside that, expedited segment and bulk transfer, there are various types of data transfers for smaller data and larger data, like such a program download. The smaller data expedited is now due to the payload of message is 64 bytes, but uh, some of those bytes are reserved for configuration, which is done no longer 
in the parameter, but it's solely configuration is done in the frame itself. This is also functionality in there. So there is a possibility to indicate to initiate several accesses to the very same uh, device. There is a possibility of routing across networks or so creating a virtual networks within the network. And some other interesting functionality in there possible. This is a kind of um, how does it work? Just in basic, <coughs> I would um, refer to uh, our can open FT webinars with more detailed information on this on that, or, or on the specification 1301 for can open FT basic protocols to learn uh, how more details on that. Uh, just an example, uh, not an example, just a slide to show you how does it work? What can you get this? The structure of the data, as you see, is bigger, give, uh, this is much bigger than the previous one. Some key features in there, the session ID to distinguish between several accesses, subindex and index in there to indicate this data type, size of the parameter, command specifier, and what is interesting, destination address, so this information about where it is go is located in there. So I don't need a special parameter for configured next, but this information is already in the frame itself. And finally, for the application data on the far right, you can see in case of the US to download, we have still about uh, 58 bytes uh, for the payload, for the real, uh, uh, payload of uh, the parameter itself, the parameter data. The routing capabilities are also interesting in especially in a way uh, using IO modules, since you may design gateway or may design several networks with IO modules within a network. So you can route the um, data to the very specific device or kind of a uh, group of devices within the same network. Finally, um, having this is basic uh, overview uh, over uh, new technology can open FT and this USD is used in there. There are opening new um, opportunities for IO modules. However, we keep maintaining the interoperability and backwards compatibility to the can open classic can open a specification for IO modules. So the devices should be more or less compatible. However, we can see they are not slightly not the same. What is data regarding the data, the application data, they are the same. They are the same there, just a couple of functions, a couple of general functions are added, but mostly Classic can open and can open FT application data is identical between those specification. In a new version of 401, you have can open part and can open FT part. Can open and can open FT part just describing communication parameters. Since they are different technologies. You have slightly different uh, PDO coverage in there. But part B is the same for both. As I said, they have the same application parameters uh, uh, in as works in both technologies. The group is uh, working on this specification, maintaining this. We are almost uh, finished with that. This is also IO modules. This is profile specifications. This is very handy to have only one group covering all the other uh, can open based technologies and so on. And this operator environment thing uh, I've described here is actually not yet um, designed or updated accordingly, but we currently think about this. The same way I've discussed this previously, I told this previously, there is a parameter necessary, a mandatory parameter, which indicates the device functionality is available. 
they are almost um, the same, but they have slightly different structure. There is not a problem whatsoever because this communication parameter and this series, uh, one, uh, thousands, thousand uh, indexes, thousand to one FFF, are located in the technology related part. So they clearly distinguish between them. So for this one, you look into part 401 F. Nothing has changed whatsoever. It's very similar. It is just a specific functionality based for all can open FD devices and the functionality is reserved. So as you see from migration between can open to can open FD IO modules, there is nothing to do much in there. The information is pretty identical to classic can open. What is actually new is in Kenopen FD specification 1301 is, is this routing capability. So indicating which port allocation in there, what are virtual networks and the routing table within there, you could cover your special networks within the networks. And for IO modules, um, we introduced several um, general functionality which is available now for open FT and for can open classic can open parts to indicate which direction goes just basic. Uh, is it a digital uh, or analog or is it input or output direction for every single um, input or output. So the only change is actually done with a mapping. Imagine this um, is the same um, in TP in process data object, nothing uh, is changed so much. This is basically um, the same data. However, due to payload for PDOs, we said uh, we do not want to configuration to reconfigure the PDO or design completely different configuration of PDOs for can open FD. So we said that bitwise mapping, which was possible in classic can open, is no longer possible. That effectively um, allows to use the same um, communication mapping scheme of PDO in classic can open, also in can open FD. So this means, however, that based on this one, I could map up to 64 single parameters, effectively allowing me to map 512 inputs or outputs in TPDO1 and RPDO1 correspondingly, increasing, of course, comparing to can open this is to a very big extent, and I need only one uh, TPDO for each direction. Since the analog modules are actually possible in there, so I could cover not many of those, but most um, um, simple, at least simple ones in there, I could have up to 30, 32 16 bit analog inputs or outputs in corresponding TPDO2 and then uh, RPDO2. So the other TPDOs, default TPDOs three and four are reserved for the future reasons, could be uh, unreserved by can automation, but for the moment, it would seem to be sufficient. As you see in general structure, it remains the same. However, the content, there are much more data is possible than to transmit and less PDO can be used. So far for can open and can open FT profiles and data information. Uh, one last slide to this one. The same applies for the testing, device testing. It is possible also for can open IO and we test currently one device. And also uh, plug fest and interoperability testing would soon be possible to within a can automation, but you could also do this yourself. 
to verify and check interoperability of the devices. So will be a slightly uh, special way of doing things. So then we have at last um, could look at um, application, possible applications, devices. We'll look into joysticks and possibly also into HMI um, mapping. The profile itself called generic IO module. So you can do this uh, from that, whatever you need. Uh, just to know for, for your information in classic and open uh, joystick was separated into uh, different uh, other specification as a part two. <coughs> in um, new version, we have reintegrated this into main part and in technology specific parts as the mandatory uh, annex. If you design a joystick, so you take, take a look in there, you find this information. Uh, in there. So for the joystick, you don't need complete to use the complete predefined mapping. You need just buttons, maybe some analog values. Uh, of course, this, if the joysticks has some HMI things that kind of indicators or just simple indication or maybe it's HMI functionality, uh, with uh, larger indication then uh, FURBA, TP, uh, FURBA PDOs can be added in there. But this is a predefined um, mapping specifically for joystick, for simple joystick, for more complex joystick and so on. 2D, 3D joysticks and this application environment. As you can see, we have some specific data mapped into this PDO. We have a couple of buttons. Uh, 12, um, <coughs> we have um, digital inputs for the buttons, outputs for special function, whatever it might be, maybe LEDs or whatever. And we have three analog uh, input values to show this position of the joystick in three axes. This will be for 3D joysticks. And additionally, if I do have some more advanced uh, outputs with a joystick, I could use um, actually RPDO1. So, so much it works for the classic. And the same way could be used in, is used actually in, um, in the Canopen FT version. The difference, let me go back, the difference between Canopen um, and Canopen FT is that I could map here slightly more um, inputs, outputs, and analog input values. If I do have, for example, not only three axis joysticks, but real 3D joysticks having actually six um, directions, six axes, or maybe even rotation axis. However, for joysticks, will be a three axis are sufficient. This is pitch, uh, pitch, your, and um, I'll say, uh, and the third one, whatever, <laughs> I forgot this. Um, but there could be actually, if the joystick is moved uh, toward normal direction, uh, uh, say normal, the planar, um, in a planar system, so it moves along the axis X, Y, and Z. And it could be also rotation direction maybe even um, some other functionality related needed some analog values so you could map it due to the highest payload of kft frame 64 bytes it could be mapped by default only those are mapped but it is now left to uh, manufacture specifically for your specific application so there are a couple more slides. Um, 
left, then I will go through them yet. And at the end, we will have a couple more minutes uh, for asking questions. If you have any, and uh, provide in the meantime then also some uh, sort of a marketing information on ours what is uh, going on in there what are next webinar uh, opportunities and so on so but for the moment um, this is a sort of example we had a specification previously um, it is uh, already uh, withdrawn since uh, not many implementations are done based on that and it doesn't cover uh, manufacture highly manufacturer specific functionality so it was hmi one was um, withdrawn instead we say 401 hmi can be designed using 401 specification in this example, I'll try to show how to do so if I need it, where do, what TPDOs and PDOs do I need for indicate my values, um, inputs, outputs, whatever it might be, uh, just to understanding outputs, analog outputs will be some values, setting the screen, setting the process value in there, whatever it might be. For, HM, uh, for, for HMI and with visual uh, components with the screen, for example, whatever it might be. Um, then the outputs just be indicators. And I say digital outputs can be single in indicators showing that something uh, went wrong or some process data for the outputs, whatever it might be. And beside that in a second TPDO, you have as usually um, buttons and values if I have also joystick to control it. However, in ChemOpenFT, we have so much more capabilities to cover uh, far more extent of HMI functionality in there. Yeah. To summarize this, a 401 specification is still maintained. Beyond classic can open, soon will be uh, can open if the version available. And the specification will contain two versions of can open, one classic can open and classic and can open if the uh, communication and mapping, video mapping parameters. And the functional um, application parameters are remain the same. There are slightly uh, more functions in there available, but they are more generic. I've shown them already. Regarding the existing uh, for over 20 years um, or about 20 years specification for IO modules, the application parameters are not changed that much. So the migration between the various technologies is actually achieved in there. So advantage of CanOpenFT is of course the highly um, um, bigger, much bigger payload allowing effectively to transmit in a short time uh, with only one message, um, many more data, uh, much more data as uh, was possible to do with classic and open. We do not want to completely um, change the integration of the devices. So we kept the compatibility between PDO mapping more or less, but uh, it is possible to design a manufacturer specific PDO mapping or completely reuse the high payload of KNFT completely restructure your application, uh, whatever your device, whatever you would like to have. Um, either this is bus coupler or gateway with a 401 capability and so on. Recently, we have a request to um, provide a migration path between can open to can open FT gateways to exchange the data in there create some kind of bridges with IO capabilities 
and um, create uh, this based on this uh, inherent routing capability, these virtual networks, we currently design with uh, or uh, actually look into the proposals which will come uh, soon for um, this uh, video mapping and uh, routing capability of such gateways. They will have surely IO modules, uh, IO um, IOs in there as usually gateways have. So the 401 will receive probably an additional functionality, but uh, most probably not in the first uh, newly released version. If you have any questions, you can contact us. If you are interested in working with a group, um, you have your own requirements, you are welcome to join us at Canon Automation. So that is basically it. In several more slides, I would just give an overview of what are the next activities of ours. Uh, depending on the situation with the pandemic, um, we will uh, check out if the exhibitions will be possible, then if they are possible, we'll go there. You can meet us there. There are next and further set webinars we do have um, actually uh, with the various other topics, um, not only for 01, also for drives, for new can based technologies for can open technologies can open lift in various languages um, available for the moment you can contact us as usually or our website our email address and if you would like to send us some information you can just call us for the marketing related issues, do uh, also contact us as well on these emails. Have a nice time. Bye bye.